Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to talk about autoregressive distributed lags model in EViews, also known as ARDL model. In its basic form, the ARDL regression model is given below. You can see here that the red ones are the autoregressive terms while the blue ones are the distributed lags of another independent variable. Red ones are the terms or the lags of the dependent variable while the epsilon t is a random disturbance term. Lags P, which is lag P, which is of the dependent variable, and Q, which is of another independent variable, can be different. While running the ARDL regression model, we have to ensure that all the variables in the model should be stationary at either I0 or I1, or it should be the combination of I0 and I1. No variable should be used at I2, otherwise, the ARDL model cannot be used. If the variables are found co-integrated with the help of bounds test, both short run and long run model have to be specified. If the variables are not co-integrated, we can use short run ARDL model. There should be a, an optimal lag in the dependent and ID, an independent variable and the error terms should not be autocorrelated. That is a condition for running the ARDL model. The advantage of the ARDL model is it gives a robust result even if there is a small number of observations in the series. The null hypothesis is there is no co-integrating equation. The alternative is there is a co-integrating equation. We should, end, we should remember one thing that while running the co-integrating equation, it should be performed on base series or transform log series of the data. It should never be performed on the first difference of the series. Then we will have to carry out the bounds test in eViews. The thumb rule is if the calculated F statistics is greater than the critical value for the upper bound I1, then we conclude that there is no, there is co-integration. It means that there is a presence of long-term relationship. We reject the null hypothesis and we will estimate the long run model, which is an error correction model. If the F, if the calculated F statistics is lower than the critical value for the lower bound I0, then we conclude that there is no co-integration and there is no there is no presence of long-term relationship. We do not reject null hypothesis and we will estimate the short run model, which is a ARDL model. If the F statistics falls between the lower bound and the upper bound, the test is considered inconclusive. Now, how to carry out this ARDL model in eViews? Let's see. The first step in running this ARDL model is we have to test the stationarity of this series and whichever variable we are taking it our equation they should be stationary at either i0 and i1 to take, check the stationarity in this series either we are using unit root testing or correlogram kindly refer my previous videos how to test how to carry out the unit root testing and correlogram on these variables now we will have to open all these variables together whichever we consider in our equation so i'll i'll pick up I'll pick up LGDPP, LM to P, R and open as equation. You can see the constant here will be specified on its own. After this is done, you will have to change the module and you will have to activate ARDL from below. Here, you will keep the automatic selection and the maximum legs which are specified are 1 independent and in regression, keep it 2. Then we will click OK, including too many legs in the model will increase the chances of multicollinearity in the model. Therefore, we should restrict ourselves for including too many legs in our model. Now click OK. You will get the result. Then we will have to go in view residual diagnostics or rather coefficient diagnostics. Sorry. And from there, you will have to run long run form or and bounds test. Click OK. You will get the result. Now, I will op copy this output and take it into the Word file. But for the interpretation, let's go in the PPT. We will have to compare this F value, which is here 6.65 with the upper bound of 5% that is 4.85 I1 or I0. So if the if this F value is less than I0, this value is less than I0, 
If f value is less than i0, we cannot reject null hypothesis that there is no long run relationship and co integration does not exist. We will estimate the auto regressive distributed lag model. If the f value is higher than the i1, here 4.85, we reject null hypothesis and conclude that the long run relationship exists and co integration ex exists. We will estimate the error correction model. So, if the f value is between these two terms, normally we consider the 5% values. If f value is between i0 and i1, test is considered to be inconclusive. Here, our f statistics is 6.658, which is greater than i1. So, we will estimate the error correction model. Now, this interpretation, which we have seen on the slide, I have copied the bounds test here and I have written the interpretation. And on that basis, we will further go for estimating the model. The model will be estimated from these values, that is unrestricted, constant, and no trend. Here, you will have to see the p-values of this. The error correction uh, term has been given here. You can see here, this is an error correction term. The p-value of all the coefficients is less than 0 0.05, so both the coefficients have the long-run effect on LGDP, both these coefficients. This is the way long-run causal effect is calculated. So EC is equal to this equation, so EC is a error correction term and it is a and, and it is a long form of equation. So we will copy this in word file. Copy, hit OK, and we'll take it in the word file. So this is the way the interpretation is written. We have already discussed how we'll write this interpretation. This one is the interpretation of the above table. Now we'll have to carry out one more test. And for this, we will again go back here in view coefficient diagnostics and we will have to run error correction form and we will get the results. Now we will have to see here the co-integrating equation, this one. So here co-integration equation 1 means it is an error correction coefficient. It is it is negative and its p-value is less than 0 0.05, which means that there is a presence of long-run causality. Here, co-integration equation 1 means the speed of adjustment of any equilibrium that is towards a long-run equilibrium state. That is the speed of adjustment. Here, the speed is 2.5 percentage. So, the speed of the adjustment is very low. So, I will copy this equation again into the word file, I'll take it into the word file and I'll write the interpretation. You can see here on the basis of this number, I've written the interpretation, co-integration equation is error co correction coefficient. Now, the next test which we will have to carry out, next causality test which we will have to carry out is a Granger causality test. For this, again, I'll go in quick, group statistics and Granger causality test. I'll have to click OK. Likes to include, keep two only, click OK and I'll get the results. Again, I can copy this result in the Word file. After taking this result into the Word file, we will interpret the Granger causality. We will have to see the p-value and these are all null hypotheses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, all of them are null. Now, you can see here the p-value of this particular thing. LGDP does not Granger cause R is less than 0 0.05 and therefore the null is LGDP, LGDP does not Granger cause R. Alternative is LGDP does Granger cause R. As a p-value is less than 0 0.05, this means that LGDP does Granger cause R. Now the next test which we will have to carry out is a Walls test. For that, again I will go in view, coefficient diagnostics, uh, wall test. Here, I will have to specify that the coefficients of all this are equal to zero or in other words, model does not exist or the coefficients of all of them are equal to zero. So, I am having C1, C2, C3 equal to zero. C1, C2, C3 equal to zero. Click OK. I got the results. I can again copy this result into the word file, copy. I 
then now I'll write the interpretation. The interpretation is you will have to see this p-value as the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So we reject null hypothesis, which means that there is a presence of short run causality. Now we'll have to perform some diagnostics on the residuals which are generated from this model. For this, again, I'll go and view residual diagnostics and histogram normality test. The null hypothesis is that the residuals are normally distributed. The alternative is residuals are not normally distributed. You can see here the p-value is less than 0.05 and therefore we reject null hypothesis which means that residuals are not normally distributed. This is a first test which we are carrying out that is of normality. That is residual analysis. Next test which we will have to conduct is again we will go in view residual diagnostics serial correlation LM test. Let me write the output of this first of all. I have written the interpretation. Residuals are normally distributed. Alternative residuals are not normally distributed. As the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are not normally distributed, not desirable for our analysis. Let's go back. View residual diagnostics, and this time we will carry out the serial correlation LM test. Click OK. Likes to include OK. Now we'll interpret the results. We'll take this on the Word file. Copy. Okay, you will have to report all the residuals. Now, on the basis of this p-value, we will have to do the interpretation, this p-value. As it is more than 0 0.05, as the p-value is more than 0 0.05, we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are not serially correlated. Because our null is there is no serial correlation. And the alternative is there is a serial correlation. Next test which we have to carry out is a heteroscedasticity test. View residual diagnostics heteroscedasticity test. Bruce Peck and Godfrey test. We will be using click OK. We got the results. Again, I will copy these results in the word file. Now, we will write the interpretation on the basis of this p-value, this one. As the p-value is more than 0 0.05, we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are homoscedastic. Null in this test is residuals are homoscedastic. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. Next test, which we have to carry out is a stability diagnostics. For this, we will go again back here, view stability diagnostics. And this time, we will activate recursive estimates. Here, you have to activate Kusum of squares test. Click OK. It is necessary that your blue line should be there in between these two dotted red lines so that we can say that our estimates are stable. You will have to always carry out some more analysis. So from here, you can go here, go in coefficient diagnostics, variance, inflation, uh, rather in co-integration graph to get the co-integration. For more videos on econometrics, kindly, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. You can also see my playlist for other videos on econometrics.